Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in with team number 2767 Strike Force from Kalamazoo, Michigan, here at the first in Michigan West Michigan district event. This two time world champion team already has one district win under their belt and looking for more. This unique robot with an awesome track mechanism that can trap more than one time in a match, consists in autons, and so much more to discover here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support Fund's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Alec, why don't you get us started with a robot overview? I'd love to. So let's start from the ground up. The first and crucial system of our robot is the swerve drive mechanism. So this here, as demoed by my lovely friend Max, is our the eighth generation of our third coast swerve system. Um, this is a system that we developed in-house and we've been using for about a decade now. Uh, we use it because we've been using uh, in-house swerves since before swerves were cool. We've been doing it before the cops were really available and it's something that we've known how to do and that we can do pretty well and pretty efficiently. So if you look, you can see the change in texture in this uh, in the bushing in here. So that's a transition from the, the printed onyx that we used in previous years to a Delron material. And the reason we did this is because it's a slippier plastic that doesn't require lubricant in between matches. Um, and that was something we struggled with last year. And we do that in order to keep the maintenance down and we can spend more time working on other things in the robot. So we do the suspension differently than we used to in the past. So this, what we used to have is a spring integrated into this wheel system. Now we've moved the suspension into the frame and the way it's hung. So by hanging it on these outside corners, we, the, the flex is in the way the wheel will bend with the frame. And then additionally, the chromoly steel frame will bend alongside these points, giving it flex. This was apparent more last year with the way that it would interact with the, going over the bump, but it's still really crucial this year and the way it will move and bend with the forces applied to the robot in order to give a stable motion throughout the entire time. Fantastic innovation as always from Strike Force. Tom, do you guys know about how fast your robot goes? A robot travels at 22 feet per second. Wow. Um, and this is controlled through this gear ratio here. We have the opportunity to, or we have the option to change it whenever we want. Um, we chose to make it a little faster this year because there's not a lot of things in the way. It's a pretty open field and we want to get down the field as quick as we can. Very cool. Thank you, Alec. Max, do you want to keep going with the robot overview? Tell us a little bit more. The next thing on this robot would be the intake which, as my lovely assistant Alec is now bringing down, is um, just four different rollers. The uh, two that actually interact with the, uh, the note first are covered in a silicon wrapping, which is one inch in, uh, in uh, overall diameter, and we just shove it on there. Works pretty well. Um, and then the second set of rollers we have are just an aluminum tube with uh, four thrifty crown rollers on them. They don't have all too much friction on the uh, the note itself, and we have these centering notes here, not centering notes, centering wheels here that just direct the note to the middle, and since this is lower friction than these are, it'll just center in these rollers and then go straight into the magazine. So if you look at our mechanism, you'll see that this is our railgun system. So it's entirely one big um, connection point, which is all in here. And this whole thing is actually removable. So up here we have a spare of it and we can change this uh, mechanism in about 10 minutes. So we do that for a quick turnaround. Additionally, there's the magazine and the shooter that are two separate parts. And because we can pivot them separately, this is how we do the amp. So this is our amp configuration. It will uh, take a note and it will spit it out down here. This is also the same way that we do our trap. So this is how it's set up when we go to climb. Um, these, are, these hooks are literally boat hooks used for storing a boat on a trailer and they will spool up in the bottom. I have a demo of what that looks like here. This is one from our old uh, climber. We had to change this this morning, wow. but this spool all spools up down in, in this container down here and then it will pick up out here in order to reach up the climb. 
Um, this is a demonstration of what the spool looks like down there. We, we do this in this way because the, the springs in here are crucial for keeping bearings uh, on the climber. A lot of teams that we've talked to have experimented with this and they found that the, the key to managing these is to control it all the way through the motion. So we have the, the five bearings down here and then two more in the back that aren't sprung. And then finally the bearings up here. And so at no point in its rotation is it not being contacted by bearings. Once it's, once it's out of this, um, this mechanism, it's free to move however we want it. Um, but it's all, it's all controlled down here by this chain down in here. Um, and that's what gives it its gear ratio as well. Along with the VEX planetary down in there, that gives it the nice one. Our team has a very strong programming base to complement very strong mechanical base. So one of the strongest things that we, uh, one of the new things we've added this year is a custom vision software. Uh, alongside our custom swerve thing, we like things in-house because we have ownership over what it does and what we know. We know a lot about it. So this year, me and one other student decided to make a custom vision system. Uh, we use it continuously uh, to update our robot's position uh, during a match. So if you see here, we have one camera here and two cameras over here. And we have two orange pies down uh, in the electronics. Uh, all these cameras are connected to those orange pies and over network tables, we can talk to the Robo Rio and give uh, April tag positional data to the Robo Rio to update our swerve. And this year we've decided to use advanced scope for a lot of our debugging. So after a match, we can pull up advanced scope and go through a match and see you know, where a robot thinks it is, uh, where the cameras thought it was. Also, we have better localization for a better shot uh, solution for our vision shots or for better autons when we run autonomous sequences. Uh, another thing we have in our pits for debugging and checking to make sure you know everything's healthy is something called a, that we like to call a health check. This health check system will run a health check on all the axes that we really care about. So, for instance, uh, our health check will run the swerves at certain speeds uh, in both directions. It will run the elbow up and down. And we can get this data you know, to show supply current and uh, basically anything we want to know about what is happening to those motors so we know if something's broken, if a motor isn't quite right, if a gearbox is broken. Uh, all that helps uh, complement our mechanical base through the uh, program. And not only that, we also have a wide variety of autons. I think right now we have 10 uh, with the ability to build autons on the fly to go against any other auton or complement any other auton our lines may have. Well, 2767 Strike Force, some awesome engineering has gone into this robot. We can't wait to see how it finishes off at West Michigan State Championship and then hopefully the World Championship as well. Thank you so much for watching and taking the time to talk with us today and have a great rest of your day. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.